Chapter 51 Uncoupling Listen was lying where he'd left her on Cienfuegos' body. Matt touched her, and she t shook her head violently. Not moving, she said. You have to, Matt said gently. Cienfuegos is no longer there. I don't understand much about death, but Maria says the soul lives on. So does Sor Artemisia. When I go to the oasis, I feel that Tamblin is still there, sitting by my fire and listening to me. People can return to those they cared about. Lishan shrugged off his hand. San Fuegos is alive. Matt sighed. He was trying very hard to stay in control. He felt just as devastated as she did. But he knew the Jefe was dead. And he knew how many times the man had been shot. Come with me, Chiquita. I'll call down the elevator. I'm not leaving, the little girl said. I left Bongini for just ten minutes. And look what happened to him. I'm staying put. Matt saw the elevator descending and a group of unusually active Egypts inside. They were talking excitedly, and one of them called to someone on the ground. He looked at the Egypts who had come with him and saw that they too were animated. Had he actually disrupted the signal from the Scorpion Star? For the first time, Matt thought clearly about what might happen when the Egypts were freed. He'd imagined them walk, waking up like people who had a very long sleep. But the shock might send them into convulsions, like Esabio, or they might all go rogue. Hey, you guys, shouted Listen. We got a sick man here, and he needs to go to the hospital. Don't attract them, said Matt, wary warily eyeing the Egypts as they got out of the elevator. You don't understand, Listen said fiercely. All this talk about Cienfuegos coming back for chats by the fire is crap. He isn't dead. You poor child. He has to be. What do you think I've been doing here? I've been listening to his heart. It's beating. And you can't say that about a de-deadly dead rabbit. Hold that crotting elevator, you guys. The Egypts were awake. No question about it. But they were bewildered. They seemed to have no memory of how they'd arrived in this hot, dark pit, and they willingly followed Listen's orders. They chatted to one another as the elevator slowly began to ascend, asking about relatives and towns they had left behind. Sanfuego stirred and gasped. The harshness of his breathing frightened Matt. He might yet die, and to think that he'd almost been abandoned. Thank God for Listen's persistence. What can you remember? Matt asked one of the Egypts. I crossed the border. I was with my wife. Then the farm patrol came, and there was pain. Pain. The man's voice trailed off. Matt wondered what his reaction would be if he learned that the man they were trying to save was the head of the farm patrol. The scene was absolute chaos. Egypts wandered about, calling the names of friends and family members. The technicians, who were far less affected by the microchips, had some memories, but they also seemed bewildered by what ha had happened. I was 20 when I came to work here, one of them said. It was like yesterday, but now I look 50. Matt pushed the technicians in charge of the Egypts. I'll send people who can explain later, he said. There's been a national disaster. Get these people food and send them to the shelters to rest. Are we at war? Look, there's a rocket, cried one of the Egypts. A fireball streaked across the sky, then another, and, an and another. It's a meteor shower, said a technician, a nice one, too. The stirabouts of the observatory hadn't been drained of their power, and Cienfuegos was, loading, was loaded into one of them. He groaned and spat blood. Matt flew the craft and listened curled up by the heffy. Dr. Angel, the girl said suddenly, I bet she's trying to blast her way through that secret door. She doesn't have to. I opened it for her. Matt swooped up as gently as possible to avoid jarring San Fuegos. You did? Were there jewels and gold inside? There was enough gold to satisfy a hundred Dr. Angels. There was a room made of amber and a diamond throne that once belonged to the Shah of Iran. Wow! I bet that made her happy. 
very happy. She and Dr. Marcos and all the soldiers ran inside. The soldiers filled their pockets with gold coins. Matt could see the lights of the hospital ahead and a crowd of Egypts milling around. He landed outside the emergency room. He got out and ordered them to carry Sinfuegos inside. Listen ran in front to find a doctor. Fortunately, like the technicians, the doctors had noticed little difference when their microchips were deactivated. And since they had been recently hired, they weren't disturbed by the passage of time. They hurried to the Hefe to the operating room and began to working on him at once. Poor Dios, do you see what he's wearing under the ju that jumpsuit? One of them cried. We'll have to cut it off, another said. You'd need bolt cutters, said the first doctor, and in the end they had to and in the end, they had to ease it over Cienfuegos' head. It was a silky vest, now blood-stained, and when it was removed, a clatter of bullets fell to the floor. That's what saved him, the doctor said. They sent Matt and Listen to another room to wait. Matt knew he should go inside and try to restore order, but he was too worried. They sat in the room where he'd seen the dead soldier and where Debenguaz's men had ambushed him. Is Glasside dead? Listen asked. Yes, said Matt good. I didn't like him. She thought for a moment. What about Happy Man? He's dead too. So the only ones we have to worry about are Dr. Angel and Dr. Marcos. I think they'll be happy with the contents of the secret room, said Matt. By now they would have discovered by now they would have discovered that the door was closed. The soldiers would have fired their weapons at the wall. Much good it would do them. And then their, and then their flashlights would fail. They would be alone in the dark with the pocket talk players. You can see him briefly, me patron, said a doctor at the door of the operating room. He's heavily sedated, but he seems to have an amazing resistance to drugs. He would have to, said Matt. He and Listen stood by Cienfuegos' bed and saw from his eyes that he recognized them. He thought you were dead, but I knew you weren't, said Listen. The heffy smiled. That's the most amazing bulletproof vest, said a nurse who was sitting by the bed. I've heard of them, but this is the first one I've seen. She pointed at the garment soaking in a bucket. It's pure spider silk, stronger than steel. They say it's harvested from giant African spiders and that little girls are trained to reel it out as it's produced. The, n the nurse shuddered. The job some people have. They left to allow Cienfuegos to recover, and the doctor explained his injuries outside. Mostly broken ribs. The bullets didn't get through, but the force of the blows must have been terrific. Terrific. <laughs> there's some damage to the liver, and a broken rib pierced... There's a... Sorry, you guys. There's a damage to the liver, and a broken rib pierced a lung. Fortunately, his heart is, is un, unharmed. He'll be laid up for a long time. The gardens were filled with Egypts or ex egypts Matt reminded himself, Paisanos, he would call them, fellow countrymen. He supposed he should address them, but he was too exhausted. Instead, he gave orders to the nurses and lab technicians to see to their needs. He will tackle the problem in the morning. I'm really tired, said Listen, trotting by his side. Me too, but there's something we have to do before we can rest, Matt said. For once, she didn't complain about the long walk. They were both too anxious to see their friends. Matt lit the path by the stream with Tamlin's flashlight, and they saw the gleam of, of rabbit's eyes as the creatures hopped out of their way. The, the chapel was long. The chapel was visible long before they arrived. Dozens of candles had been lit and fastened to, the, to rocks. The inside of the building was well illuminated by flickering light. All around the outside were newly freed Egypts, farm patrolmen, and the outside were newly freed Egypts farm patrolmen, sorry you guys, and bodyguards, among them Daft Donald. Sora Artemisia stood in the doorway with Maria, Fidlito, and the bug. The bug was on, a, was on a leash. You did it, shrieked Fidlito when he caught sight of Listen. He ran through the crowd and hugged her. You can slap me all you like for touching you. I'm glad you're okay. It isn't worth it, she said, hu hugging him back. You'll only do it again. Matt and Maria held each other's hands. They were more than restrained, being older and somewhat embarrassed by the large audience. Well then, said Matt. Well then, replied Maria. I guess things have worked out. He wished they could, they could be alone. 
God has answered your prayers, said, Ar said Sor Artemisia in a ringing voice. He has sent his messenger. What in the hell are you up to? asked Matt. He saw the gathering, the gathered men kneel. Some were weeping openly. You know who you resemble, said the nun. These men are frightened, and they need your sympathy. Try to look saintly. First, Sanfuegos tells everyone that I am El Patron, and now I'm su supposed to be Jesus Malverde, thought Matt. When will I ever be myself? Matt spoke what he hoped were consoling words and sent everyone away to their hostels and bunkhouses. Then he went inside with Maria, and they embraced behind the statue of Malverde, where the bug couldn't spy on them. I've got so much to tell you, he said. Me too, said Maria. I was outside when the first meteor fell. It was the brightest I've ever seen. And then I saw another one. Not long after, the men began to show up. They were so lost, mi vida. They didn't know what had happened, and they were calling for their families. Sor Artemisia said that Malverde was the only shred of religion they'd had, and that we must honor it. I'm really interested, said Matt, yawning broadly, but I've been through so much and I can't even think straight. That's right, she said in an understanding way he loved. We have the rest of our lives to talk. He kissed her sleepily, staggered to the front of the chapel, and passed out on one of the pews. In the middle of the night he woke when a bright light passed over the forest. It was the last of the meteors, perhaps Tundra. The Scorpion Star had uncoupled, each building separating from each, each, each building separating from the others, and carefully maintained orbit had failed. One by one they had fallen. Matt tried not to think of the terrified people inside. He'd been no better than El Patron shooting down a passenger plane. Hey, you guys! If you enjoyed today's reading, please give me a like. And um, I hope you subscribe, and um, man, on Monday I will read the final chapter, The Ghost Army. Thank you so much.